Hi and welcome to TMG Movie Reviews, I'm Rick. I'm Andrew and today we're going to be discussing from 1994, Shallow Grave, directed by Danny Boyle with a screenplay by John Hodge and starring Ewan McGregor as Alex Law, Christopher Eccleston as David Stevens and Carrie Fox as Juliet Miller. Now Shallow Grave was a massive success on its initial cinema release. It grossed far more than it was anticipated by the production companies. It was a co-production between Film 4 and Polygram. It received incredible critical acclaim both here and abroad and won the BAFTA Award for Best British Film. It's, for those who don't know it, it's set in Edinburgh and is the story of three rather unlikable flatmates played by our three protagonists and they're looking in the opening montage for a new flatmate and this is a very funny sequence in which they interview far people who are far, far inferior to their ideal. And they then finally meet the final housemate who is named Hugo and he's played by Keith Allen. He moves in, things are going great, but then when he doesn't come out of his room, they have to break in and discover not only a corpse, but a large suitcase of money. And the question is, do they turn in the body to the authorities and not keep the money, or do the other thing, which is destroy the bodies, keep the money, and hope no one ever finds out. Now, this is a film I chose personally. We actually watched it as well, both for the first time in our um, A-level film studies, and I think it is one of the greatest British thrillers ever made. It's a fantastically tight, claustrophobic thriller with fantastic performances from the three protagonists. It's a film that constantly keeps you on the edge of your seat, and it's a film that utilises every trick from every great slasher film. He's behind you. The darkened rooms, the haunted house, maybe. There's a brilliant sequence. If you remember when they're taking Hugo's body down the stairs and it's completely dark, it's pitch black, it's night and they drop the torch from the top of the stairs and we watch the torch fall and there's a moment where your heart stops, will someone catch them, will someone have heard the torch and it's just absolutely brilliant but let's find out what did you think. Um, yeah, it's like, like I said, it's, it's not really a likeable character, the three main cast you've got these sort of young professionals and they're really arrogant and um, it, it, they're just not really that likeable in the first place and you see that with the way they sort of demean the, the people who are applying for the flat. Yeah, especially Cameron. Yeah. yeah, especially Cameron, yeah. We've got Ewan McGregor who stands out in this film, like this is an early film for him. Yeah. And he's just sort of, you can you could tell at that stage, just from this film, that he, he was gonna go on to a big career. Yeah. He stands out in this film, and he's, he's, he's in there with like the ninth Doctor Who. <laughs> and um, and yeah, he, he still, he, he's just, he is the main focus. He's fantastic. Actor. Yeah, he, he steals the screen yeah. in nearly every scene he's in. The two men uh, seem to be quite attracted to Juliet. Um, throughout the film, and she sort of uses that to her advantage. Sort of play, plays them off each other to um, to see which one which one suits her better at the time. Because her end goal is to just get the money and um, take that for herself, which is everyone's end goal in the film. Yeah. It turns at a certain point. What I think is interesting actually about these three characters is I was thinking about this, and I imagine because they're three different personalities, different backgrounds, I imagine that they met at university, and I imagine that the reason they ended up living together is because no one else wanted to share. A house with these three guys they're yeah. so vile and what's an interesting point is when they do at the point start to spend the money it's only between Alex and uh, Juliet there's no mention of inviting anyone else around there's no mention of going hard with all the friends. I don't feel like they have any other friends because every know. single other person in the film gets belittled by them whether they're young old it doesn't matter they're every They've sort of got a prejudice against everybody else. Yeah, nobody fits their particularly high standards which when you think about it they're all cruel they're all characters they're all thieves they're all, you know, despicable as each other, so... Yeah, it's they're, they're definitely well suited, but mm. even that sort of friendship breaks down pretty quickly as, as the film goes on, because once the money is involved, you just see sort of more start to turn on each other. Especially David, I mean, David is the, the mild-mannered one, he's the accountant, and he sort of retreats into the cellar, and there's a really, not in the cellar, so the attic, and there's a brilliant sequence. Actually, if, you mention, if you've seen our review of The Wicker Man, I did mention that... Um, as you shouldn't watch Shallow Grave before you watch The Wicker Man because there's a little sequence, do you remember with Alex, he's watching yeah. the end scene of The Wicker Man suddenly you hear this little mm, sound and Dave is drilling spy holes in the ceiling from the, from the attic where he's hiding the money and it's, oh it's so creepy. Yeah, I mean, one of the things about David's character is he's forced to sort of pull the short straw and which means he has to um, end up mutilating the body where he has to cut the arms off and then destroy the teeth. And it just, like, his character goes through quite a big change throughout the film after that. I mean, it seemed, it, it's really, he it, it portrays it really well. He just, he proper goes through, like, some mental breakdown, starts living in the attic, and yeah. just sort of becomes a, a recluse. He seems to um, then become a killer from, yeah, from that. Just, 
so it completely it completely breaks down. It's a brilliant portrayal of a man completely losing the plot and just completely having a complete mental breakdown, and it's it's quite frightening. So yeah, I I thoroughly recommend it. I first watched this a long time ago, and I just ever since I first saw it, I've constantly gone back to it and constantly found new things to like about it. It's a film that really, and it's just a really terrific, really scary thriller. But yeah, and all fairs do see Charlotte Grey, but be warned, there is some extreme violence. Yeah, so um, I'd probably give it a 4 out of 5, really liked it, I thought it's really well written, I thought the cast were played everything really well, I liked the dialogue between them. For what it's trying to do, it exceeds brilliantly, and being that sort of original sort of British thriller, and uh, yeah, with, with a sort of, it's like a black sort of comedy thriller. Yeah, black and yeah, hole comedy I think is the best way to describe it. Black what? A black hole comedy because it's basically just falling into a pit. Yeah. You know, since when they find that money they open that suit, so everything goes to hell. Mm -hmm. And there's also, I'm going to say, oh, we won't reveal it, but there's a brilliant twist ending. An absolutely brilliant twist ending with the great use of Andy Williams' song Happy Heart. So yeah, I'd give it a five. I've loved it for years and it's in my top ten favourites. It's just below uh, Miller's Crossing in my list of top ten favourite films. So yeah, please do see it, it's terrific and hope you enjoy it when you do see it and always leave us a comment if you enjoy the film and tell us what you think. Yeah, alright, thanks for watching. Thank you very much and please see Shallow Grave, thank you.